All right. Happy Sunday. Hope your weekend is going well. I'm going to have a great day watching football. I don't know what you're doing, but have a good time doing it. What I want to talk about is going to be another short. I think I'll be able to make this short. We're going to talk about kind of the stages of life and how egos are developed and how to kind of dissolve them in a healthy way, but maintain some of the benefits of the awareness of having uh, an ego. So the first statement is that egos don't really exist. You know, they're these fake selves built up over time. And to start somewhere, go back to your childhood when you're very, very young. Um, and you're really kind of living in a dream of some sorts. You're not really self-aware. You don't have these thoughts about yourself uh, the same way you might have them as, as a teenager, you know. And everybody gets to this point of uh, self-awareness different ways, some earlier than others, way earlier. And some just it happens just randomly. The psychologist Carl Jung said he was just walking to school one day or something. And he said it was as if I stepped out of a mist, you know, that kind of thing where you, you have that moment of self-realization. And from that moment, what starts building up? Well, you start collecting data about the world around you and you start aligning that towards maybe what you want and you start building your actions and building your identity as something that will strive towards, you know, any set given goal. And, you know, that's kind of like objectively what's happening, but there could be bad, good or terrible goals within that, that framework because, um, usually what's going to, what the thoughts and values of, of that time of self-awareness are going to be determined by are uh, factors that you don't, you don't necessarily have control of. You know, your environment growing up and, and your genes are going to be a big determinant of the kind of framework that you get place, placed in at first. And so looking back, once you're older, you want to use that framework to identify what you are, who you are. But you don't want to stick to it. And so that's what I want to get to. I want to get to hypnotizing the ego and and kind of tricking it because most of us identify, a lot of us, and I still do at points, you know, most most people don't get to fully dissolve that part of your life. And I don't really know if you should fully dissolve it, but um, most people live in this space where it's sort of an entity that's controlling them and pushing them to serve certain ends that maybe in the past they thought were the correct ones, but um, they can't break free of them now. And what is this mechanism that causes people to to not want to break free from their ego? Well, it's because even though the ego is not you, it wants to portray to you that it is you such that when it's being dissolved, um, you will have a natural reaction against that and fight the kind of change that your true self is trying to bring bring into the situation. And so, um, you know, there's different points that the ego might get dissolved. A traumatic experience could be one of these where uh, the the experience doesn't match your your notions about life within that ego framework, and it forces a new way of looking at the world onto yourself. And that kind of change is very hard to deal with, um, psychology, psychologically. And um, so, obviously, we want to we want to change things in a healthy way. But the first step is not having the fear associated with dissolving something that isn't truly yourself, right? If it's really just a component that you have total control and total dominance over. Uh, that you can use as a tool um, rather than identifying and having it use you as a tool for some, you know, some desired end. And so what would be a, an example of using this as a tool? Well, once you take a step back and look at the ego for what it is, an illusion, um, you can start piecing together certain facts about your previous life as that ego. Um, maybe you can understand better how you affect people you can better understand how you affect yourself with thoughts and belief systems and values 
Um, and from from that point where you've dissolved the ego through one one method or another, I'm not going to tell you what those methods are. You can find them yourself. And there's, you know, obviously drugs, you know, are part of that, but you can do it in, in non non drug ways too. Um, just with natural hypnotism and, and meditation, there's a lot of great resources out there too, or uh, power liminals. I said I wasn't going to tell anything, but here I fuck I am spouting off, but nothing specific. You, you know, use those keywords. Um, that's what really, uh, you know, allowed me to to take a full a full view of things because it's not like you can't be successful with an ego, right? Money wise, but chances are there's certain areas that are going to get excluded, um, and it, you know it's all a journey of personal growth, right? So, so you could get a lot of growth in this ego mindset, but um, ultimately, I think it's it's something to break out of because it's an illusion. Because once you understand, you know, the true uh, dynamics of consciousness, right? You understand that the ego fits into the third dimensional paradigm. And so when you're threatening it with, with taking the step back, being able to view it at a, high, a, a different angle as a separate thing, that's working from a higher, a higher paradigm, I, I think. Whether it's necessarily higher dimensional, whatever, I don't necessarily know, but, but it's working on a higher, a higher level in some way, shape, or form. And that higher level is a level that the ego can't really exist on. Uh, it doesn't have a place there. And, and it's almost like a law of nature that it doesn't have a place there. It's not like you could bring it up there if you wanted to. Uh, it's simply a mechanism of that that other world. And so, um, it, what, what dissolving it is going to do is going to open up your experience uh, to perceive things in a new way. You know, it normally the ego is very reactionary the same way it gets reactionary when it's being dissolved because it wants to keep existing you know if you're listening to a conversation all i try to listen to is stuff that stretches my mind i don't agree with all of it but it it makes me have a different viewpoint than maybe the traditional one because i think the traditional one is just simply it's not that it doesn't tell you half truths or full truths uh or facts, right? They, they tell you facts, but they're not, maybe not truths, right? So you can grab onto these facts, but ultimately they totally exclude ent entire narratives. And the ego can grab onto the narratives that they throw out, and it's a lot harder to break those narratives when you have an ego bound to them, which everybody's ego is bound up to them, mostly because your entire life has been a uh, systematic placement of information to cause you to interact with that information a certain way resulting in certain thought patterns beliefs and actions in accordance with the people who control the things that you're being taught all right and that's you know that's a big thing to understand um one example of of these things is is what i talk about right you're taught that central banking which is what really runs the world, and consequently controlled by big banks, is just something that's part of. There's nothing really deeper to that. Um, and I, I mentioned certain things that I have problems with, like the Federal Reserve bailing out corporations uh, or buying the bonds of big corporations. Meanwhile, they're not forced to liquidate any shares, say, or, or liquidate any cash, while small businesses are put out of, you know, out of work and people are losing their jobs on those ends. And, you know, or the bailouts of 2008, the way that was talked about, it's a very specific narrative serving very specific ends. So um, hypnotize your ego because that's your true self. You know, look at it and say, are you really real or did I create you? You know, and if I created you, I can destroy you as well. I can manipulate you in any way you want as the true self and, and use you, the ego, to whatever desired end I want to, to, to understand more about myself, understand the world around me. Um, it's enough for now. 
uh, I don't think I'll, I'll talk on the market at all. Um, you can reference my previous video, I think, for for information on where you think where I think the market's going. Um, yeah, have a good day. Like, share, subscribe.